the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. And today I am lucky enough to be with Modell Brown. Modell, could you give us a 60 second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Hey, how you guys doing? Um, yes, of course. So who I am, uh, I'm a Chicago, a Chicagoan, um, and I write children's books. Uh, my children's books basically cover several bases, things of like, uh, like my first book, which is Jordan First Day, it has a metaphorical background of how and why hip hop started. And it also, my books also create a segue for children to be educated on like social emotional learning And it also gives us the possibility to create a dialogue, to have the conversation of equality and inclusivity. So, um, yeah, that's basically, you know, my reason for writing and to, you know, conquer different life experiences through, you know, adult life through children's eyes. How did you get started writing children's books? Um, So... When I started writing children's books, I was doing hip hop music and I was fairly just all about like um, togetherness and and love and prosperity. So, you know, my my first character basically just started out as, you know, a cover art. And then I wanted to transition that into a children's brand, like a clothing brand. And then, you know, it's like, why would kids want to wear these clothes? And it's like, you have to give them something to wow them. And I wanted to create um, something where I can use my my musical background also with my artistic background. And I end up coming with the whole Hip Hop Littles book series. Um, I love writing music, but I can't write a book without writing a song first. So <laughs> in order for me to create, <laughs> to create these wonderful uh, reads, I would definitely have to write it as a song and then go back, create the story and then go through my editorial team. And then we just come up with the whole uh, perspective for the the work. All right. That's amazing. I've always wanted to write a song and I can yeah. write fiction and I write nonfiction. I write poetry and writing a song is something I have no clue on how to do. <laughs> um, writing music is, it's tough, but it's, you know, learning the poetry schemes it kind of you know it kind of helps but if you just write from your heart write from your experiences and you use the 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 poetry schemes it, it'll come out yeah, i mean if you it depends like if you're trying to be a metaphorical artist a lyrical artist or somebody who's just like really just trying to just get the word out be straightforward it can be easy but it can be very very complicated because you don't want to you know deter your audience away from who you are as a person and try to create a, a smoke screen for people to just believe one thing and when you're actually someone else. So it can be fairly complicated at times. All right. So you're writing from the heart and you start with a song and then you turn that song into a child's book. Yeah, for sure. How does that happen? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, that goes, that goes almost without saying. Because um, it's also something that I really just can't explain but so my music is based off of my own life experiences so I use that and I put that into my books as well so my books are kind of I guess it could be a metaphorical reading of what I've been through in life already and it could be you know maybe like a relapse as, as well going back into seeing what I've been through and taking that and implementing it into my books but I use the the positive side of things when I'm cre- like when I'm setting up the plot and everything for the books. I use you know I I use a creative writing. So I'll take what I have and what I've been through, and and I'll put that all in the song. But then I'll look at it from a child's life perspective as well. So I have to go all the way back to me being you know eight nine years old and try to remember those events and try to see how it was projected to me. So that way I could project it to my audience. Give me an example of the life lessons that you're trying to help children understand. Okay. Um, So just one with like my recent book, which is known as nerve that is based off anxiety. So 
with me growing up in the underprivileged neighborhood in one of the high crime areas in Chicago, I developed anxiety just from my surroundings, uh, being around a lot of violence. And um, that created anxiety for me going into high school. I started writing music at, in seventh grade. So when I went into high school and I started performing, the first, the moment I got on stage, my anxiety went through the roof. So I, I have the entire student body just staring at me. And at this age, I'm what, 15, 16. So, you know, I completely just, just froze. And the guy that I was on stage with, gladly, he was able to, to coach me and help me through it. And that way, you know, we were able to give a great performance. But me going through those um, those events throughout my life, I kind of took that and I implemented it to known as nerve, which is about um, stage fright and her anxiety. So I just, you know, transitioned it over to my characters and created that writing. And what age group are you are your books? I would say um, three to eight, but um, a lot of a lot of people really been reading my books to kids that's 10, 13. And so. and then they they come with the benefit of being able to buy clothing that represents the book characters. Yes. So, OK, so hip hop littles, <laughs> I'm basically. I look at myself as being like the Walt Disney for the culture. Um, I know that that's a heavy saying, but I have a strong belief that the most magical things happen from things that from seeing things that you could never imagine. So me growing up in those areas, I've, you know, me and other kids that's in those areas, we see things that people probably would never be able to imagine. And I want to create something that that projects and give us, you know, a spotlight to be able to be seen, to be able to see the things that we go through, but also do a 3D animation um, viewpoint as well. So that's that's kind of like exactly what I'm trying to build here. So all of my characters have very lifelike personalities. So the children are really able to relate to these characters because they have fears. They have um, they have things that they that like they look at as occupations, things they love, um, their downfalls and things of that nature, too. So each character is different. Each one has each character is from a different ethnicity. Each character has a different passion and love for something that's pertaining to the music industry. So it, it's a whole it's a whole thing that that's being created here. And what's your favorite part of this whole process? My favorite part of the process, honestly, is just the feedback that I get from parents and I get from children. That is probably the most rewarding thing I would say coming from doing what I do. Do you uh, take your your books into schools and the libraries? Yes, um, libraries have kind of been. It's been a little rough with libraries recently. <laughs> um, they, I get a lot of like reviews. Granted, but libraries look for um, a lot of professional reviews. So as I'm building my professional reviews, and then I'll. Um, I plan to attack all like libraries in 2024. Um, schools, I do schools out in the Chicago land area and and the outskirts as well. That's really interesting. So how are how are you finding your audience most of the time? Uh, for the most part, it's through social media. Um, that's where my heavy marketing is, and also um, I have a marketing team that I just brought onto the company, so they do a lot of groundwork for me, and. Um, so, you know, I leave I'll leave books in like pediatric offices um, and things like like hospitals. Like, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of. Uh, uh, what's the hospital? I can't think of it right now. It's a it's a huge um, hospital in Chicago and we we donate books to them as well. I've donated books to shelters out in, Brooklyn, in New York as well. So, you know, that's basically how I, you know, build my connections and, and get my feedback and my reviews from a lot of parents. What an interesting tactic to connect with places like hospitals and shelters. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I feel as though that, you know, 
a lot of children, you know, when they go in for like surgeries or any sickness, it's like, you know, you don't want them to go in with the mindset of like, oh, what's about to happen to me? You know, you want to kind of, you always want to kind of calm the child down. So I feel as though like a good read with good artistic uh, projection and a relatable story, you know, it could kind of calm the, calm the child down in a sense of, of the word for sure. Do you also do the artwork? Yes, I also do the artwork. I have a co-artist as well too, because I'm not able to, you know, complete everything in one in one seating. So I have a co-artist that helps as well. Wow, you are the whole package. I try to be. <laughs> I really try to be. Um, I but what I love, I love working with other people though. Like my whole life, I've always worked with other people, and that's been like one of my um. my main characteristics is, is team building. So that's one thing that I do love to do. So um, me having staff and me having members that work with me in the company, is definitely a, a wonderful feeling to be able to celebrate your wins with people that have, this, that have the same passion as you for sure. So what's next? Do you have uh, any new books on the horizon? You want to expand the, to um, other type of children's books or a different age group? Uh, so what's next? Uh, 2024 will be completely based off of the marketing spectrum. Um, I have a new book that will be coming out, which is um, Ryan's Podcast Blues. That will be coming out around the summertime. That, that book will be based off um, depression. So um, also we'll be hosting mixers where It'll be like a hip hop littles mixer, like where kids will come in. Um, all sponsors will be involved and they'll come in and I'll pair them um, at this event where it's like an escape room. So I'll pair them with children that they don't know for a social emotional learning and team building experience to where they can, you know, it'll help them develop uh, friendships for sure. And it'll help them cope with um, being able to interact with different kids of different ethnicities, um, from different backgrounds, for sure. So that is my plan for 2024, to grow that and to possibly start uh, my animation series on YouTube, which would be like a Disney-like 3D animation um, story of, of, of everything that's being built, of the books, of uh, No, the characters, lifestyle, and everything like that. So I've been writing the dialogue and getting everything ready for the series as well. Holy smokes, that is crazy. <laughs> I'm 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 trying to create something new. Like I said, like we need a Magic Kingdom. You know, we need another Magic Kingdom. And being Walt Disney being from Chicago, I feel like it's only right that I go after the torch, and I come right behind them. I love it. That's great. All right. So the YouTube series, are you currently reading your books and putting them on YouTube or anything like that? Um, I have a reader who works for me and um, my plan is to get her to um, to do that as far as I do book readings on YouTube. I haven't started that segment yet um, because I want to I want to do it with a different type of creativity. I, I don't want it to be just a, you know, uh, a, a person reading the books to the children. I want it to be live animation. I want it to be animated. I want the characters to be able to walk across the screen at certain points. It's like I, I really want a huge thing to when I when I develop this this reading for YouTube. But the series will be just like watching a mini Disney movie. So that's kind of what I'm looking to create very soon. It's it's taking a lot because I have to, you know start animation school again but with that and me you know networking with people i don't have any investors but i'm looking for investors but i don't have any just yet so everything i'm doing right now is completely out of pocket so um yeah it's 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 a huge thing it's definitely a huge thing that's coming um for the years for the years coming for sure are you still performing music are you just no. writing the songs to write the books Yeah, so I'm not performing anymore. I feel like I don't have the energy <laughs> to perform <laughs> to perform on stage anymore. Um, so what, the music that I do write is more so like um, I'm I'm reinventing, 
you know, the, 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 the magical eyes of the Disney culture. And the music I'm writing is literally for the animation series. So, you know, like Disney is heavy on like the singing spectrum in their in their movies. Me, I want to do more of the hip hop spectrum. But, you know, people will look at it like, oh, like a kid's bop. But yeah, but no, you know, it's like, it's like yes and no at the same time. So, uh, like with me creating that hip hop spectrum, uh, of course, it's, you know, it's it's no, you know, profanity or anything in that nature. It's all uplifting hip hop music that I plan to write. Um, some songs will be a little bit dumbed down or a little saddened because there are emotions that's involved with these characters as well. So we want that to be projected as well as as well as the uplifts and the happiness. So that's kind of what I'm working on as well as writing the music for the animation series. Incredible. Incredible. I am very impressed. I I think uh the hip hop genre is a really um fantastic way to connect with community and kids love hip hop. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I, I I look at it as from my reading as being one of the like, you know, the most multicultural genres of music. So, you know, with me intertwining that with my artistic ability, I feel as though it's, you know, we all we all have a responsibility and you know to push the conversation forward and you know, no, like, until we're all free, like, no one's free until we're all free, like, that's kind of the way I look at things, and that's kind of, like, what I look for children to take away from the readings of my book, it's, you know, we all, we all we are, we are, sorry, we're all here, you know, for a reason, and, and to, and to push equality, so that's, that's basically my heavy, my heavy statement, and I want them to also know, like, you know, your story only gets better because you know the author, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah. Becoming, <laughs> um, you know, connected to your audience. It's really the only way authors can, can succeed is when their audience knows a little bit about who they are because they have yeah. a sense of trust. When you build that trust, you build that relationship. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's why I love connecting with, with, you know, doing these podcasts is it's a great thing because I get to do a one on one with the host and I always enjoy the connection that I have with the host and then looking forward to, you know, possibly, you know, even building with them, you know, like I like when they post the the interviews that we have, we do like a whole marketing thing, you know, like I'll tell my staff, like, you know, if if they send over a a, a marketing or a digital advertisement, we'll use that. But we'll also create our own digital advertisement to send over to promote with the podcast because we want people to see and understand like what we're here for and what we do. Modell Brown, uh, how can people get in touch with you? How can they learn more about Hip Hop Littles? Uh, get in touch with us everywhere. Uh, HipHopLittles.com, Hip Hop Littles on Instagram, Hip Hop Littles on Facebook. Um, me, my my personal Instagram is at OK Modelo. At OK Modelo. Modelo, yes, man. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. Are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? All right. Let me warm up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's 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 have it. Let's go. All right. Speaking of warm up, what is your favorite warm drink? My favorite warm drink. Ah, that's heavy because I don't like anything warm. I I don't. If it's if it's warm, it's, and you're from I Chicago, how can I you know. stand it? I know because me being from Chicago and me being outside as a kid all the time, it's like the cold. I'm so used to it. So even if I'm in the cold, I still want a cold drink. And it's like it, it does, and it's like it may it may make my body maybe like three degrees a little colder, but it's it's just something warm is just like I don't know. Like warm drinks leave an aftertaste to me. That's just how I look at it. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday is Halloween. I must say it's Halloween because I feel I have a strong like understanding. Like my 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 theory with Halloween is 
given the way the economy is and society nowadays, Halloween is my favorite holiday because it's the only holiday that you can be whoever you want to be with no judgment. Excellent point. Final question. If you were going to hop on a boat, would you rather be a slow boat or a fast boat? Uh, I would rather it be a slow boat. Take a nice because, cruise somewhere. Yes, I'm a, I'm a very I'm very big on sightseeing. I'm very big on nature, and I love a calm setting. So, being fast is it's too fast for me. It's moving. It's too much going on at one time. I'm not able to enjoy it. My anxiety may go through the roof. So. No, like I love the, the calmness of like the sea and like you know, the, 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 the creatures like at, at sea bottom. It's like it's so many things in the water that we just don't even know about nowadays. I, I don't know. I would love to see that. Modelo Brown, thank you so much for stopping by. All right, of course. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate the time. I really appreciate you. Um, taking the time out to reach out to me and let me give my story on my books and my company and what I'm doing. I really do appreciate it. You have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. Allison out. We're all done. All right. Thank you. Modelo Brown was raised in Englewood, Chicago, Illinois. Starting off rough in a middle-class community that's known as one of the most unsafe areas in the city, hard times were inevitable. With a lack of diversity, crime control, and especially job opportunities, Modelo had to strive to achieve the success he has today. Having always been interested in different forms of art, including music, animation, drawing, and painting, Modelo took his passion and use it to create a better future for himself. While in a recording session, Modelo realized the need for togetherness. Among other things, Modelo believes music to be that one force strong enough to tether communities together, and thus, Hip Hop Littles was born. For more information about Modelo, visit him everywhere at Hip Hop Littles. For more information about the Florida Writers Association, visit us at floridawriters.org. Until next time.